As expected, the area with the most fabric overlap required the heaviest filling. I'm using Z-Chrome Body Filler, which I have found to be the best in the market for workability and sanding. I want to keep good, firm pressure along the top of the squeegee, because that's the high spot, along the bottom of the squeegee at this point, because that's where I want to feather it in, and I want to leave all the material here in the middle. Now you can practice for years, but uh, that's at least enough to perhaps get you started. Begin leveling the filler using an air file board. The tool is convenient, but not essential. A long wooden sanding block works just as well. The keys are to use long, even strokes and to focus on smoothing the high spots with the surrounding area. The dual action sander is needed to level the filler in tight areas. Once again, try to keep it level so the sanding remains uniform. The Z-Chrome sands easily and blends right in with the fiberglass. Rarely can everything be filled perfectly the first time. Sanding usually exposes areas that are wavy or just need more filler. Long skim coats can remove the final trouble spots. Just finishing up the sanding. The last few contours here where it all meets the body. You can see everything's got a good overall surface finish. And I'm going to move on to priming with the Duratex surfacing primer. The final step before priming is to wipe down the surface with a solvent to remove dust, waxes, and grease. Do not use a tack rag when using Duratex products. Acetone works best and can be applied with a clean towel. Be sure to open the rag when you're done so the acetone can evaporate before you throw it away. Duratex Surfacing Primer is a polyester-based primer sealer which is the best product available for covering and protecting fiberglass structures. It offers better protection than factory gel coats, yet sprays like paint. I'm using an inexpensive automotive spray gun and still have great control over the material. Siphon feed and HVLP spray equipment have controls which permit changing the shape of the spray pattern. I'm using a tight round pattern in the license plate area, then quickly switch to a broad fan pattern when covering the flat surfaces. Duratec's ability to be sprayed through this type of equipment without a loss in physical properties is what makes the moldless technique possible. Now it's time for a quick lesson in spray painting with this type of gun. Begin by holding the gun perpendicular and 10 to 14 inches away from the surface being covered. Depress the trigger and slowly move across the entire panel. Release the trigger briefly at the end of each pass to reduce unnecessary material buildup and overspray. Half of your spray pattern should overlap the previous pass for proper coverage when applying Duratec. If these steps are followed, satisfactory results can be achieved even by a novice. As you gain experience, the quality of your work will improve even more. Allow the first coat to tack up for two to five minutes before following with the second coat. The second coat is applied just like the first, but it can even go on heavier without sagging. It may not be easy to see the progression of your overlapping passes, so look for the glossy, wet line of your previous pass to be your guide. Following the third pass of Duratec, the material thickness is about 20 to 25 mils. You can see on this side of the car that the primer has filled the weave pattern of the fabric and completely sealed the body fillers underneath it. Since Duratec is from the same polyester family as the rest of the materials used to make the trunk, it will expand and contract at the same rate and forever hide the moldless internal form. The roaster section is now all primed and filled with the Duratec surfacing primer. The six ounce fiberglass cloth, you can see a little bit of the weave apparent, but there aren't many materials that would have filled this heavily. Really what I'll be able to do is block sand and DA sand that down and there, really, there won't be any texture left. You might have to do a little bit of minor filling and everything before the final paint work, but uh, everything is bonded to the T-bucket. It's now a T-Roadster, 1923. We're going to mount it to the chassis and we're going to have a whole lot of fun driving it. Those are the six basic steps to moldless construction. The steps don't change regardless of the application. There may be fewer modifications to make or more bonding of individual units, but the principles remain the same regardless of the project you tackle. In the case of this roadster, moldless construction permitted the quick and accurate duplication of the form while maintaining all the advantages of a composite molded part. The entire body weighs only 100 pounds and needs no steel reinforcement. It is corrosion resistant and waterproof as well. A functional trunk seal was also easily produced without cutting, forming, and welding sheet metal. It didn't require any expensive special tools. Overall construction time and costs were also quite low. It required just 50 hours to get the trunk to this stage right here go even faster if you're not making an instructional video. The total material cost was only $385 and judging from the comments we have gotten so far it was well worth it. For those already familiar with composites this project could be duplicated quite easily. 
If you're just beginning to work with fiberglass, though, I'd recommend starting with a scaled-down project. Fiberglass Developments offers a moldless composite kit, free technical assistance by phone, and other books and videos to help you begin to learn more. While the car is far from finished, Rob and I have had fun designing and building our own product. We are proud to have created a different look than the short truck bed or small turtle deck shape and encourage others to do so if it suits your taste. We're not saying to forget about that heavily modified tea bucket look, but other options are possible using the moldless technique. I hope this video has been informative for anyone who has an idea they want to make happen. Before starting your next project, consider moldless construction. It's cheap and it doesn't take much time, and when it works out right, you can always make a mold. Until next time, I'm Scott Campbell saying, get creative and get busy. Perfect. Thank you.